for the poor man, but not one for the rich man. And what happened when the King James version of the Bible was translated, part of the King James came from the Latin, and they noticed that there wasn't a proper name for the rich man, so they just used, transliterated the Latin word for rich, dives. So this became the story of Dives and Lazarus. The rich man got a name, but Jesus never gave him a name. It shows that God, in this parable, favored the name. And what was Lazarus' name? What did it mean? God is my help. God is my help. In James chapter 2, by the way, I, Christians have been accused of oppressing the poor. And there have been examples throughout history where Christians have oppressed the poor. It's interesting, though, that primarily the gospel has appealed to the poor more than to the rich. There's a great passage in James chapter 2. James is scolding his congregation because there's some Wealthy people that come to his congregation and people show them favoritism. James writes, My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a person in dirty clothes also comes in, And if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet, sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not the rich who oppress you? But... That line is telling. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom? Christianity is the first religion that allowed people from every status in life to worship together in the same room. Poor worshipped with wealthy. Middle class worshipped with poor and wealthy. And primarily, the majority of the people were poor. They happened to be people who when they heard the gospel, they were like Lazarus. God is our help. And they believed more so than the wealthy, more so even than the middle class. That happens to be true today. Christianity is growing. The parts of the world where it's growing like gangbusters happens to be among the poor. South America, Africa, even in the Middle East, growing primarily among the poor. I said that my sermon's title was The Opiate of the People. Karl Marx thought that the church was was oppressing people. It was giving comfort to the poor. Comfort in this world to the poor. So it made them less willing to work and make a better life for themselves. So he was against 
um, religion and try to not have religion in, um, in his philosophical and, and economic plan, communism. We cannot deny the fact that the poor have been oppressed by Christians. Now, have they been oppressed by Muslims and uh, Hindus and other uh, groups? Yes. But we cannot deny that that has happened, especially r racial oppression, but economic oppression also. But is Marx right? Do the poor become overly comforted by the gospel and then not try to achieve um, a better status of life? In Central and South America, back in the, the 60s, uh, the theology was developed that bought into the communist ideology and that uh, um, the poor were being oppressed even by Christians. And uh, some priests and some missionaries, uh, Protestant miss missionaries to South America, um, became secular, gave up their, their ordinations to work with the poor because they bought what Karl Marx had said. But then a strange phenomenon happened. In the past 50 years, Christianity has just boomed. Christianity, a Christian awakening, uh, people awakening to the presence and the understanding that God is alive in their lives, had boomed, primarily because of Pentecostal Protestantism. But sociologists said, ah, we've got an opportunity now to test Karl Marx's theory. Has it oppressed the poor and made them worse. So they went into entire villages that had been transformed by, um, by the gospel. And they found that their family life was so much better. And economically, they were still poor, but they were thriving compared to what they were before they had this new understanding that God was alive in their lives. So some of the sociologists then asked, why? And here was the conclusion. The people were told that the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the universe, the creator of all that exists, loved them so much that his son died for them. They ate it up. Wow! The Lord of the universe loves me that much. And not only that, the Lord of the universe wants to put his Holy Spirit in you and give you strength and courage to live life today. It transformed their lives. They became more economically well off than before. Rather than it being an opiate that lulled them into a false contentment, it gave them boldness and courage to live for today. Martin Luther King Jr. Some people think he's a communist, by the way. But what did he do? He transformed. He, he looked at the, the, the South primarily, and, but racism was going on all over the place. And, he's, and the churches were racist, oppressing black people. Now, did he ask for less religion? He asked for more. His speeches, when you read them and listen to them, they were sermons. More religion, 
what finally gave the white churches the understanding to stop their hatred and racism? More religion, not less. More. Well, God is on the side of the poor because they understand that God is my help. And then God, we need to understand God's people then are on the side of the poor. Just because God is. Are poor people uh, perfect people? No. Uh, do they need to be taught some lessons on how to live and everything? Yes. But to the ones that God loves because they are more easily respond to the good news of the gospel. The rich man says, well, Jesus, warn my brother. Notice he's in hell. He doesn't seem to mind it too much because he never asks, hey, do you mind if I come up there with you? Can I get out of here? He just wants Lazarus to give him a little water. He doesn't want to get out. He wants to have Lazarus come in. Isn't that curious? And then he says, and notice he's ordering Lazarus around. as Oh, Lazarus, well, he was a guy at my door every day. Tell him to help me out. And if he won't come down to help me out, at least send him to my brothers to warn them. And, Jesus, or, and, and Abraham says, warn them. They have plenty of warning. They've been warned by Moses and the prophets. And what has have Moses and the prophets said? If there's any among you in need, a member of your own community in any of your towns, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. That's what Moses said. Isaiah, here's a prophet. Share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless into your house. Abraham says, Moses and the prophets have already warned them. All they have to do is listen to them. Well, what can we say? The Lord, the good news is, the Lord of the universe, the creator of all that exists, loves you. Sent his son to die for you. That's the good news. And now as God's people, we're just asked, Share the love. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
Gracious God, we thank you for the church, its mission, and its ministry. Help us to be examples of faith and action, and to pursue justice in all we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of the nations, we pray for peace in places of conflict and war. We especially pray for our own country with the unrest, the shootings, and the attempted bombings, and violence by police as well as against the police. We pray for exiles, refugees, and those far from home. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray for all those who are lonely or homebound, those who are trapped in any kind of prison of body, mind, or spirit, and for those who are sick or injured. Especially, we pray for Cindy Anderson, Lael Biela, Carolyn Callan, Doris Ambertson, Sophia Fedgley, Dennis Hess, Dennis Holmes, Ellen Malcolm, Janet Little Crow, Chris Marquardt, Annabelle Moore, Jan Snath, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Lucy Stillwell, Paul Thompson, Lawrence Tillotson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, Andrew Stephen Malcolm, and Marietta Meyer. Are there any others? We remember and give thanks for all your saints in light and for those who have recently died. We pray for, for we pray that you comfort all who mourn, especially the family and friends of Robert Monsines, Pam Cole, Sean Shanklin, John Albrecht, Dennis Chapel, and Cindy Plaster. Lord, in your mercy.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. Oh, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, we come again to you, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy, you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in, your, in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Señor.